Hey, Math 43 I had a question on chapter 8, number 119, and here we had a survey of 1,200 people, and we were told that 61% feel the president is doing an acceptable job. So as soon as I hear 61%, I know I'm in proportion land, right? and that also means I'm going to be using a Z-star critical value, and, and we're interested in the population proportion of people who feel the president is doing an acceptable job. So even in reading that question, I saw another word of proportion. So it's another clue to help me with how, what my, uh, which land I'm in. So I'm gonna survey these 1,200 people and I'm gonna keep track of the number of people who tell me the president's doing an acceptable job. So just for example, let's say we surveyed them and you know, like 650 felt the president was doing a good job. I would then turn that into a proportion by taking my frequency, my number of successes, and dividing by sample size. So P prime will be the proportion of people who feel the president is doing an acceptable job. This is quite literally back from chapter one, frequency versus relative frequency, right? So we're in proportion land. All right, so with that, it's, it's asking us, hey, which distribution would you use? Well, you're always gonna use your Z distribution when you're in proportion land. And the next part says, go ahead, Let's, let's make the confidence interval. So for our write-up in this class, there's always four parts. You want to check your assumptions. I should say four parts to a confidence interval write-up. You want to give me the title. Right? You want to actually construct the thing. And then you want to go ahead and interpret. So those will be the four things I'd look for in a free response question. Now for the assi assignments, for the assumptions, um, we were not told we had a random sample. So you see the X mark going there. For the normality assumption, you have to check that, and I'm going to switch to my highlighter. I'll go over to purple. You have to check that NP prime is greater than or equal to 10, and at the same time, you need to check that N times 1 minus P prime is greater than or equal to 10. Now, our, our N was 1,200, and our sample proportion, they told us, was 61%. So that means my X, my actual, the number of people who said they felt the president was doing a good job was 732. That's greater than or equal to 10, so great. And on the flip of that, out of that set of 1,200, it looked like 468 did not feel the president was doing an acceptable job. Okay, that's still greater than or equal to 10. So again, here you basically have a success, and here you have your failures, right? And I put it in quotes because I, I don't mean it to be success or failure. It's just what we're keeping track of in this problem. So we had 732 successes, 468 failures out of our sample of 1,200. Now, my sample size is small relative to my population because if I take my sample size and multiply it by 10, I definitely think there's more than 12,000 people who can talk about uh, the president's job. So that allows us to sample without replacement, which is great. All right, so at this point, I've checked my assumptions. Now here, you see me go ahead and I put my, my title. So you're going to tell me the number of samples you're dealing with. And in chapters 8 and 9, it's always one sample. Um, 10, 11, uh, and 13, we build off of that. Um, you're in proportion land. You're either going to tell me mean land or proportion land. And if you have a proportion, you're always going to be using the Zs. So there's my title. And then it's time to go ahead and construct it. Right, so I'm actually going to, whoops, that jumped. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and construct it. And here is my general confidence interval formula when I'm in proportion land. And I know this is going to be 61%, right, because that was my sample proportion. So I'm going to put that in there. I know N is 1,200. And then the directions for this said go ahead and use, I'll put it here, a 90% CI. So that's going to tell me that my Z star value is 1.645. And that's what I'm going to put here. So you see me going, and I actually put all those numbers in that place. And then what I typically do, instead of crunching all of this on my calculator, I just go to one prop Z interval. And keep in mind that when you use this, these first two numbers here have to be whole numbers. I put in my confidence level, I hit calculate, and there's my confidence interval. So now I've done my confidence interval, and the last thing I wanna do is interpret it. So I am 90% confident that P, the true proportion of people who feel the president is doing an acceptable job, is somewhere between 58.6 and 63.3, right? So if I were to run the census, I think the parameter is somewhere in here. And the method we use to construct this estimate in the long run works about 90% of the time, meaning if you did another survey of 1,200 folks and made an additional confidence interval and another survey and another CI, and another CI, and another CI, about 90% of those CIs 
will capture the parameter and about 10% won't. And then the last thing I'm asked for is, can you calculate the error? Now the error, I'm gonna change pen colors on this. The error, the margin of error is just everything after the plus or minus. So basically I want this number here. And that's what you see me filling in. I'm just using the margin of error and finding out I had about a 2% margin of error, 2.3. The other thing you could have done was you could have taken the average of these two numbers. So I could have done 0 0.586, 0 0.633. And when I divide that by two, you're gonna find out you're at 61% because your, let me do this, your stat is always in the middle. And then what you could have done is you could have taken point, oops, that was the eraser. Let me back that up. You could have taken, I'll go highlighter, you can take 0.61 and subtract 0.586 to get that margin of error, or you can take 0.633 and subtract 0.61. And if I put that on a number line, just so you see it, right, we had to have 0.586 here, 0.61 here, and 0.5, not 0.586, JK, 0.633 here. And so the margin of error is either the difference between these two numbers or the difference between these two numbers, but it's 0.023 uh, for the most part. I think this one is 0.024, but that's just because there's a little bit of a round off error. All right, so that's how we do number 119. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.